Frequent riders will be notified of the hazard when they are approaching that uh, location using their smart wristband. And uh, the users will also have an option to take a virtual tour of the trail uh, such that they can uh, adequately study the features of the trail and they will also have the option to uh, tag points of interest such as uh, steep slope or big jumps such that they will be notified when they approach these spots on the trail. Additionally, we will have an optional a, a feature uh, where the riders can uh, set up meeting points on the map for group trail rides. So the way to use our app would be to purchase uh, the smart wristband and to download the app. Optionally, users can even use a smart watch instead of the smart wristband. Okay, the resources uh, involves the schedule and budget. And uh, currently, we are in the development phase for the software and the hardware components. In roughly six months, we plan to have our application and the, a prototype of the smart wristband in the market. Now the budget, uh, the main costs uh, are incurred by the smart watch and the Google App Engine. Google App Engine we would uh, require for cloud storage of data. And other additional costs are incurred by the cost of parts for the smart wristband, uh, these three components. And also we'll be providing participant incentives to try out our prototype. Questions? OK. <laughs> I skipped this part because I may, I know we finished early, but I got thrown off, I think, by something. Okay, questions? So first of all, it was really nice for you to open the presentation without having any slides and just starting with the conversation, just demonstrating how much you know about this um, community. That was that was very well done. Um, very engaging. I had two questions, really. So one, you were mentioning about the app, the wristband. So a user, yes. a mountain biker, and I don't know anything about my mountain bikers, I'll be honest. So they're going down the trail yes. and a hazard comes up. Yes. How likely is it that they're actually going to stop, take a picture, and upload it on the app? Well, the mountain biking community is close-knit, okay? These people, I've been injured many times. Strangers came around and helped me. We don't want each other to get injured. It's dangerous. So the likelihood is, is actually pretty substantial. There okay. already exist communities that, that actually do create riding journals where they take the time to log obstacles, to log hazards. But as I said, this is a hassle. Not everyone does it. Yeah. Much easier to take a photo have the photo uploaded and then dispersed to all riders. So if you're 50 feet away, you get it. You get an alert. You know, okay, something's different ahead. Something's changed. Yeah. I have to slow down. Yeah. I might get hurt. Okay. You've taken ahead, or you've already stopped. Well, yeah, yeah that's <laughs> true. Yeah. But if, if you haven't, though, if you notice it, you swerve around it, and you're really into it, you're going to stop and say, "Oh, I better." I, I don't. Well, it's true. I mean, if you, it's maybe you don't. Maybe mm -hmm. you're just cruising and you swerve around it. But if it's if it's if it's that much of a concern, because you also have to consider that riders also take the time to put up signs themselves. Yeah. If there's a danger, they'll say, "Okay, I've got to come back tomorrow and put up a sign. This is way too dangerous. Someone get seriously injured, okay. maybe even die." Okay. And so it's possible that they just might cruise around it. Maybe they'll come back the next day. Usually we take breaks from riding, so maybe they'll say, "Hey guys, chill out. I got to take a picture of this. Yeah. Upload it to the back end. Okay. Disperse it to all the other riders." Okay. So that's helpful. The second question is somewhat related. So. Um, so the, this idea of looking at the virtual trail before you head down, it's a great idea, but how up to date do you think it'll be? Like, Because I would imagine okay, trail right. conditions can change. It's, it's not going to be up to date, so that's the whole point. You take the trail capture once, that exists for you to scroll through to see trail features. These things don't change. Mm -hmm. The point is that when you do capture, when you do geotag a hazard, there's going to be a marker on the trail view, so it's going to be adaptive. You're going to okay. be scrolling through, you'll see there's a jump there that's always there. There's a cliff over there that's not going to move. But when there is a down tree, there'll yeah. be a marker because someone else took a photo the other day. A marker will pop up, and I'll say, oh, "Okay, but that's there." Attention. Yeah. Okay, got it. Thank you very much. That's helpful. What about integration with existing technology, like a Fitbit or something? Where, where would you want to do your own wearable? Well, 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 because it needs to be robust. Because it's not you can crash and not get injured, but you can crash and break a three hundred dollar smartwatch very easily. And so we wanted something that was robust. In our interviews, we just we just we found out that many people were actually okay with wearing their smartwatch, and that's why we decided to support Android and iOS smartwatches. Um, we needed that we needed the haptic capability, so I, I we're um, Fitbit doesn't vibrate, but the smartwatch. Okay, well, we could support that as well. It's a matter of sending a Bluetooth signal to the to the to the to the wristband of the watch and simply initiating a, a haptic alert. And so the the app would control all of that. The, all the all the wristband of the watch would need to know is that when it gets that signal vibrate, and that's it's basically a dumb component. It doesn't. So, as a lay person, this is this is like ways for trails, right? Yeah. 
ways like the car app. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm not familiar with that one, but I so you should download it because if I'm driving and I see a police officer, yes. I press a button. Crowdsourcing. You know, Crowdsourcing, absolutely, and yes. And so on that, so that time, so rather than stop, imagine that I don't have the luxury of stopping. Would I be able to either press my watch or do something to say there is a hazard and just pin it to like a Google satellite image? It's, it's definitely possible. The other reason I was initially hesitant about using a watch is because this is downhill mountain biking and if you're taking your eyes off the yeah. trail, yeah. you're going to hit that tree anyways. <laughs> but, it, but you're right, it's, but there have been other papers that have actually used the smart watch to tag POIs and so if you slow down enough where you could just tap it and say, okay, it won't take a picture obviously, but there'll be a GPS marker, there's something there. It's a possibility. I'd be interested in supporting it. I don't think it'd be that hard to develop that. So I, I think that's something we could support. Yeah, I, I wanted to say also, that you guys did a great job presenting, knowing your product, and you seem to be very comfortable with this mountain biking. It's not, it's, it's not the world I know, but it, it's, it, it's, it's impressive with your knowledge of, of your industry. Thank you. Right now, you go flying down the mountain on a, on a bike, right? You know there's risk, inherent risk to it anyways, right? So right. You, you know that, that something bad could potentially, I mean, you don't think, you don't want, in the back of your mind somewhere anyway. So you're going down the, and I do believe that it's probably a tight knit community where they would share data, but how would I, how much time am I gonna have? Like, I, I'm not gonna, I'm never gonna look at me. You're just gonna give me a vibration and I'm gonna know to slow down? It's the only time that thing is gonna vibrate is when there's something changed, something, something's dangerous. It's not gonna be vibrating off the hook. That's not the point. It's right. not, that would, that would, you know, that, that would, yeah, it would basically be a distraction. It would, it would devalue it. Right. It only vibrates if someone thought that there was something dangerous ahead. Now, we've discussed ideas to prevent sort of trolling it, you know, people might just be taking pictures of random things. We discussed some ideas of using computer vision on the back end. If it's just a picture of a dog, we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll make it go away and it won't, so. That's a good point, because yeah. if, if it is buzzing every two minutes, is it, it's like, what's the point? I, yeah. the so I, I had two minutes. observations of the uh, potential markets, right? It's in the U.S., because you had some statistics about uh, your, before I talk now. So how many are these mountain biking trails on commercial kind of properties that there's a pay for, I did uh, white face out in New York. On right. It's true that there do exist trails that are in the winter actually ski trails and so those are on resort grounds. Well white face was actually off the ski trails. Is that right? It was totally separate. You're paying them to use the gondola. Still? Okay yeah. That's, and then so, you come down and they give you a trail map. But. Well that's the other thing. See that the, the, the another reason and I'll get to that in a minute. The another reason why people love mountain biking I think is because it's actually a fun way to exercise because once you get to the bottom you've got to go back up and the majority of places don't have those those automated mechanisms to so, get back up. So my only comment was going to be is that it's most market, of them are on that, state forests. No, so you could approach these people who have a commercial okay, oh, and, yeah, you're right. and sign true. them up that hey we'll do the mapping for you and it will be a Gosh, utility that your that. people can come in, you can do a search and say where's a trail, you know, within fifty miles and boom their their site comes up or even have them do paid advertising. Absolutely, yeah. Second I, that never occurred to me. The second observation was the apparatus. I understand the need for a, I got to think when you're like this, that you need something aggressive to tell you. Right, you ever exactly. think about other areas? You know, you're going to laugh, but like a dog collar? That well, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, some of the people, when they when we interviewed them about the, the prototype, they mentioned, well, maybe not, maybe they wouldn't, so I thought about maybe finding a way, because we all wear backpacks, and that's how that's where we put our water, that's where we put our phones, okay, so we, that's, it's safer in there because, you know, you fall, there's some padding. I maybe thought about placing the phone in a way or, or developing a back so that it was right up against your back, maybe you could feel that vibration. And you're right, because when you're riding, it's not, it's, it's very, you know, there's a lot of vibration. It's gonna have to be a pretty serious amount of vibration on your wrist to even feel it. The only other place I thought of was some way to use the phone to, to generate the haptic alert. I hadn't actually considered any other place other than your back, because that was where your backpack is. I, I, I wanna kinda draw out two, two points that you're making there. One, couldn't you have a voice thing like slopes? And it's true. Yeah. Or watch your ass out. Like, yeah. if you're vibrating like that, yeah, I just may not notice because, because I'm so yeah. pumped it's through a dr with adrenaline. It's true, but then you also might not hear it. Yeah. But so you know, if you have your headphones in, if you have your headphones in, it's uh, it's a definite possibility. Many yeah. of us do <laughs> listen to music. <laughs> when you're mountain biking, you're listening to music. I do occasionally. If you're in a group, you usually don't, but you know, it gives you a way to pump you up. Yeah. It keeps yeah, you going. If you get something in your ear, you can just inject the tone. 
Yeah. Exactly, yeah. that's what I'm saying. And so if you did have, uh, yeah. and I think that would be super easy to support, I think that if you, if a rider wanted to, to go that route instead of purchasing a prototype or if they didn't own a smartwatch, they could easily do that. You could also, that tone could be generated out of your backpack. I'm not convinced it would be loud enough to yeah. hear. Or if it, it was, it'd be very well, distracting yeah. for everyone around you. It's true. And, and, and you, you say the market is uh, 6 to 45 Million. Of mountain bikers, generally, a subset of those are downhill mountain bikers. We we discuss or we discovered in our interviews that this doesn't apply to all mountain viewers. Okay, but many of them are cross country. This is on a flat ground. There's not really if you see yeah. something, you have plenty of time to stop. Yeah. Uh, so we know from online communities, though, from online forums, that that boast membership in the hundreds of thousands that it's a, it's a substantial community. Right, and, so I, I, I had a question. I want to push back because yeah. you jumped in there. Okay. Um, I don't know how big the downhill mountain biking community is, but if I was an investor, I'd say, well, I'm probably not going to get 10x out of this. But if you said, oh, and this could apply to runners, right? Because of any city I go to, I run. I run along the Charles. There's always crowd oh, everywhere. Sports. Or skiing. S skiing, snowboarding. Right, we had thought about that too. People skiing, and really? when you ski, you stop it's all true. the time, right? You, you may ski for 20 minutes, but then you're going to stop and yeah. be like, okay, there's a tree here. I'm going off trail. It's very yeah the same type of uh, we when we initially created this idea I had posed the the idea to my my teammates that the same type of issues apply to sneak uh, to skiers and snowboarders and I think that that could easily be incorporated into our into our into our marketing you shouldn't leave it up to us to figure that out right tell us so we're excited about like wow this is bigger than they say this is great. But their expertise is in the mountain bike, and they yeah, really sure. have specifically targeted that. That's a good that. point. So that's it is. A good point. It, that's you, you should stick to what you know, and then expand off that. It could be a jumping off. Because yeah, it, it, the, the worst thing you can do as an entrepreneur is start too big, yeah. and then you, um, you, yeah. it's hard to get going. Yeah. So I'd say focus on the mountain biking, build that up. If then that's your passion, the then you can bring it to other industries because you've already established yourself and then you're you now the leader in that industry, you go to other industries. It's true. And so the that's, that's my opinion. I yeah, that's how it's apps awesome. like Rentastic have started. Right? They started with only a running specific app and now they have yeah. a, a built into the mountain biking and uh, cycling. Yeah. Uh, and additionally, Strava, the, the, the app that we all use right now, which is limited by the way, it only provides a generic map view. You can look at this map, you're not gonna be able to tell there's a five foot drop off coming off. So it's limited, but it, it is for runners, it's for joggers, it's for riders, it's for all types of sports. So you can see that an app would have the capability like ours to expand into other markets. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. Thank you guys. Good job, guys. Good luck, fellas. Thanks. All right. See you later. Yeah. Good job. All right. I thought this was interesting. I just couldn't get my head around the market opportunity. I was trying well, it's to. It's a small out. market. Yeah. But and they're fierce. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. well, I think that the people within that industry are very connected, like they said. Yeah, and they I are. Think that, Tight you know, and, and I also think that they're very passionate. Yeah, about no, I agree. That. So you're going to do that get, kind of biking? You know what I'm saying, if you're, that, if, if you're going to risk your life going out yeah. the mountain, if there's any data that can help you, yeah. Well, there's. <laughs> There's the whole advertising piece that I touched on with the commercial trails, but I would also put spare parts because I'll tell you, my mountain bike, I was probably spending a thousand a year on parts. Oh, yeah. Because you go down these trails you and you don't know about the hazard. Yeah. Like I've gone off a five foot jump. Yeah. Well, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> and, and you break everything. So wow. it'd be cool to even order your parts, right? Well, yeah, not blame your bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right. Assuming you're yeah. conscious. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, no, I think there's a whole market that supports us mountain biking and make right. them an advertising piece. Right. Those people yeah. would advertise on the app. On the yes, app. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, so my it has some potential. It's just not going to be like you said, it's not going to be 10x. Yeah. My, my biggest concern small is, is yeah. the real-time aspect of this, the yeah. notification, because I did look up, you know, what's the accuracy of the cell phone for GPS, and they say average is 69 feet, but they vary, and it's it's a survey that I gave them the comments on, that it varies from 3 feet to 699 feet. Yeah. And then there's the actual update cycle on your GPS, because, yeah. you know, I use my phone for a car GPS, and it's yeah. always telling me, you got you're going to turn 450 feet and I'm already at the corner because it hasn't updated so I wonder what the real time aspect is. I just made that as a comment not yeah, as a good comment or anything. Yeah, I'm not I'm not even sure. So when you look at 
the technology, like Waze, you mentioned, and su I'm surprised they don't know Waze because that would yeah, be. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's Waze. No, they're younger kids, I get it, but, yeah. but that would be like, that, and I get why they don't understand.